And we are back like we never left. Welcome to Pressing Issues. My name is Daniel the Humorous. Well, the drama at the Buki House of Commotion, a.k.a. the Nigerian Senate, had seemed to uh, kind of be on the low a little bit for now. And let's see if it um, continues um, in that positive direction. Anyways, you know by now that Senator Alin Dume was suspended. And, of course, there was a protest or a group of protesters who came to complain or protest against his suspension. Now, new development. Remember Honorable Doris Ubo? Yeah. You might not remember her like this, but you will remember her like this. <laughs> That's right. Doris Ubo was a member of the Sixth Assembly, and she was the lady that was beaten in that fight. <laughs> remember that fight? The fight that brought Dino Milai to fame? That's right. Now, she is saying that she will organize her own protest if the Senate should try anything to reverse or reduce or touch Senator Aline Dume's suspension. Because it was the same Senator Aline Dume, or then Honorable Aline Dume, as Minority Leader of the House in the Sixth Assembly, who moved for Dino Milaye's suspension when Dino Milaye also read papers, just like he read, talking about the ostentatious lifestyle of then Speaker Dimeji Bankole. Now, you see what has happened six years after the Sixth Assembly. <laughs> That's right. The same Ali Ndume got his suspension from Dino Milaye. The same Ali Ndume that led to Dino Milaye's kaftan being torn, showing us his cheap singlet. <laughs> That's right. So I hear you say, karma is a biatch, right? That's true. So be careful what you do. Now, talking about that fight, there was also one man who was involved in that fight in 2011. Remember him? Ch Honorable Chinyere Igwe. Well, he's now a commissioner in River State. But something pretty happened at that time. He got his hand broken in that fight. And then we didn't know Doris's name at the time. So we saw Doris's picture, and then we heard that a certain Chinyere Igwe was, you know, uh, 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 injured. Hands were broken. And women group came out from different places and said, no, we are protesting against violence against women. Only to find out that Ching and Igwe was a man. <laughs> so, so that he didn't want to stress them for coming out, you know, for nothing, he had to wear skirt and drop lipstick to come out and address the protesters. <laughs> That's just by the way. Though. Now, still on the Senate, you recall, Sahara reporters, they are really on the prowl this time, looking out for those who have questionable certificates. And the next man on the chopping board, no, no, not a very fine gentleman. Who would have thought? Senator Andy Uba that he got his certificate from the United States of, the States of America from um, people they call certificate vendors, and um, he, he had issues forging his WIAC and all of that. Well, isn't it surprising that nobody's talking about it in the Senate? That's right, because nobody wants to be ndumed. <laughs> yeah, ndume is a new medical condition that you get as a result of too much reading of newspapers, which can lead you to being ostracized by your friends and your colleagues, just like the real specimen, Aline Dumi. Yeah, <laughs> senators are talking in hush hush tones now. They be like, Shh, Ababio, Ababio, have you been reading the papers? Ababio be like, no, I've not been reading the papers. Andy, Andy, certificate. Okay. I don't want to be Dumi, I don't want to be Dumi. You know, so everybody's kind of hush hush on that. And this is bad. Because now they are depriving us of the opportunity of hearing the Igbo version of Ajay Kuya no je. Ajay Kuya no je. I would like to know what it sounds like in Igbo language, in Anambra language, for God's sake. Somebody investigate Andy Uba and clear him. Come on. And yes, Nigerian citizens seem to be getting on a whole new level right now. I have no idea. We just heard that Honorable Saliu Adamu, representing Boso Paiko, um, federal constituency in Niger State, just got beat. Yeah, no, no, not beaten. Beating is when, you know, when, when you got beat. Yeah, he just got beat by his own constituents. Why? Because since after the election in 2015, he has not found his way to his hometown or to his constituency. And then all of a sudden, 23 months down the line, he pops in just like that as if nothing happened. <laughs> well, yeah, his constituents were not going to take that lying down. They said, you know what, Adamu, get the hell out of here. He said, no, he was not going to go out and po, 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 po. They got on him. I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to say Nigerians, I think it's about time. Yeah. 
It's about time. Because they've been leaving the real issues and focusing on uniforms and all of that. So it's about time we start doing the needful. Chairman of the Nigerian Governors Forum and Governor of Zamfara State, Mr. Abdulaziz Yari, came out after a very special meeting with the President and said, the outbreak of meningitis right now in Nigeria is as a case or is as a result of fornication. <laughs> That's right. He specifically mentioned fornication, which means for you adulterers, you're free. Okay? So he didn't mention the adulterers. He said, no, the fornicators. Why? That God is not happy with fornication and has said that since you people have decided to do anyhow, you, you people will now start to see anyhow. <laughs> now, what I don't really understand is that, first of all, what is meningitis? Now, let's talk about what causes meningitis, okay? Now, they said, according to WebMD.com, that meningitis is caused as a result of viruses and bacteria that are residing in different parts of our body, mostly in the intestine, sometimes in the throat, sometimes in the nose. But if they find their way to the tissues around the brain or spinal cord, it leads to inflammation, which is the meningitis we talk about. Because they say the tissues around the brain and the spinal cord are known as the, the menines or menines. or well, you, know, you, know what, you know what I'm trying to say anyway. So now, what are the things that lead to people suffering uh, meningitis? is a result of close contact sometimes with carriers, like coughing, like sneezing in close proximity, and of course, kissing, <laughs> which now makes perfect sense because only fornicators kiss. Adulterers don't kiss, they go straight to the business. So, Abdulaziz Yeri is a smart gentleman who has a point. So you people should stop attacking him. That guy came from where you people were not coming from. And well, in as much as that sounds kind of dumb, I must say, no other Nigerian governor can call him to order because the chairman of the PDP governors is busy preparing for life after governorship to start to work as a DJ. <laughs> and of course, the chairman of the APC governors, who is the other, uh, Rocha Sokorocha, is running the first state airline when the nation hasn't even had a national carrier, Imo Air by Dana Air. So you know what? Everybody's busy right now, so Abdulaziz Yeri, ride on. Only for the Emir of Khan, who happens to be one of my favorite, one of the flyest um, royal entities in Nigeria, Emir Sanusi, Emir of Kanu, came through and said, you know what, Abdulaziz Yari, what you just said is a totally Islamically incorrect statement that you are battling culture when we should be battling policy. And he called him to order. And you know what, I think right now Emir Sanusi is busy calling out everybody. Because even they had an economic recovery plan that we just happened to have after a long time from this government, Emir Sanusi took it to the cleaners, saying you're collecting loan from the Chinese, which is kind of, which is kind of you know, worrisome. You're taking the loan from the Chinese and then um, to build a light rail, and then the rails are coming from China, the workers are coming from China, the drivers are, are, are coming from China. And where are they driving us these, these rails to? Is there an industrial estate to drive it to? Is there a farm? And just as Amy Asanuzi said, we're only going to be driving to naming ceremonies and weddings. <laughs> so what I don't understand is if the driver and the workers and the trains and everything are coming from China, what then are we borrowing the money for? So we're borrowing the money to pay them back? Well, we need someone to explain that to us. And then we had a certain Mr. Tunde Lawal coming on TV to say this. We hope to monitor implementation. First of all, as we speak, um, efforts are ongoing in uh, developing a detailed roadmap. In other words, what Mr. Tunde Lawal from the Ministry of Budget and Economic Planning is saying is that right now they have come this far to bring about the ERP, the Economic Recovery Plan. So right now, they are going to set up yet another committee to now bring the roadmap. So if it took us 23 months to get here, ladies and gentlemen, another 23 months possibly for the roadmap. And then we will need to vote this government back in so that they can now continue the roadmap and set up another committee. Because when they now build the roadmap, they now have to build the vehicle, which is another committee. Then another committee has to be set up for the driver of the vehicle. 
And then another committee has to be set up for the traffic lights, for the vehicle to move on that road. Not forgetting that a committee has to be set up for the LASMA or CHI to stand around to make sure that the road or the vehicle is moving. In. You know what? We're just, we're just transporters in this country. That's all I can say right now. We're just transporters. We don't need any Ministry of Transportation anymore. We are all ministers of transport because, I mean, from roadman to traffic lights, well, we're just going to be hanging in there, aren't we? You're welcome back. Now we'll begin this segment with this. I'm Now, that happened to be my favorite campaign song in 2015. And this man has turned out to be one of the best leaders right now in Nigeria. Talking about the governor of Lagos State, Mr. Kimwumi Ambode. In a bid to making Lagos the very uh, perfect mega city that it deserves to be, of course, security should be in check, on point, and in place. And just recently, he inaugurated what is known as the LNSC, the Lagos Neighborhood Safety Corps. That's right. And he says they're not going to be armed. They're just going to have tasers and a little of Kung Fu <laughs> lessons here. All right. And then they're going to be like second or third responders walking in tandem with the police. They are expected to assist and complement the police by providing useful intelligence for crime prevention and to facilitate the arrest of perpetrators of criminal activities. Community. You know, but one of the things that really got me interested in this is that one of their key roles is to be provided information in their various neighborhood of suspicious activities or criminal activities and then give it to the police. Now, it sounds nice, but in the streets, this is known as snitching. <laughs> and you know what they say, snitches get stitches. But for the first time in history, Lagos always turning the tide, snitches are about to get digits. <laughs> That's right, they're about to get paid for snitching on their people. But it is cool as long as it takes away crime from our society. What I'm most worried about anyways is who will be heading this organization. Because I don't want Desmond Elliott tomorrow raising a motion that this man or woman or whoever it is should be wearing a uniform. Because that might lead to Sahara reporters going to investigate in Lasso if indeed he graduated from the economics department or if he had the first, second, third, fourth, fifth or no class at all. I've been Daniel Humorous and you have been wonderful listening and watching this show. Do well to follow us on all our social media handles, like our Facebook page, and of course, ensure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and get a lot of people because this is where it's happening. We are leading the discussion right now in Nigeria. Until the next episode of Pressing Issues, make sure that if it's not pressing, it's not an issue. And ensure that you're pressing something anyway, which way you could be pressing it like this, or pressing it like this, or pressing it like this. Either way, there's a pressing. I'll see you on the other side.